Junior Vasquez is quite possibly New York's nightlife king. From his perch high above the crowd, he sends hardcore dancers into a musical trance. This is Sound Factory, some say the hottest underground club in the city. It's packed every Saturday night, nearly 2,000 strong. They come to dance. They come to experience the musical magic of Junior Vasquez. Here when he's not sending the crowd into a frenzy at Sound Factory, he's one of the most sought-after record producers and music remixers in the business. He's collaborated with Madonna and has worked with everyone from Janet Jackson to Prince to John Mellencamp to Cindy Lauper. New York to Lancaster may only be a three-hour ride, but in many ways, Junior is a long way from home and a long way from his parents. I mean, of course, they don't understand what it's all about. No. What does their son, Junior, whoever that is, do in New York? Right. During this trip home, everything right, seemed, right, right. as he said, kind of weird. For a man who changed his name from Donald Mattern to the more New Yorkish and exotic Junior Vasquez. Junior was born in August 1949. He's the second of four children. His dad was a butcher, his mom an artist. As far back as he can remember, Junior had that renegade spirit. If it was wrong to be one way, I'd have to be that way. It's just so, it was from, I think, from the day of my birth, I was like that, I think. And, and growing up, becoming a teenager, I think, I was so attracted to, like, really, like, things that were different. Junior says his individuality didn't always go over well in his small, conservative community. His style was on the edge. I just tried to do things different. It was great to walk down the street with, the, with weird fashion on and, and people make fun of you. I hated it at, at one end, but really thought it was great. On the other hand, and it, I was just very involved in art, music and hanging out but eventually junior yearned to move on there was nothing else to to hang on to here i mean it was heartbreaking from for my mom's i left and everything but i did it in steps and not like i just boom right so you know but i had i had to definitely get out and broaden my horizon he left for New York in 1971, enrolling in the Fashion Institute of Technology. His dream was to become a fashion designer. The new environment also led to some identity changes. I just wanted to shed that skin. I just, I grew my hair, I permed it, had an afro grew a little goatee back then. He fell in love with Latin culture in New York, and Donald became Junior. Partying was big at the time in New York, and Junior didn't miss a beat. He hit all the popular clubs and was intrigued by all the DJs. The focus became the dance floor. So I said, the DJs really got a lot of power. And then when mixers started coming in and the whole technology change, it was really, it was really an incredible thing. But I said, I would like to do that. So the idea of becoming a designer took a back seat and Junior began to make tapes for friends. He would spin at small parties and clubs and over the years, his reputation grew. In 1990, investors backed him in opening Sound Factory, a place where he could work his magic. Today, the club couldn't be more popular, because critics say Junior has an ear for what makes people move. Hear this, right? So what I listen to, this is it. Ride that, but then listen to this. That's a, de a definite, this, listen to this. Not a chance. It was too pretty. Do we get, do we get Mariah's? If the nightlife battle means packing the dance floor, Junior searches for vinyl that gives him ammunition. So it's like two mixes now. As Saturday night approaches, Junior pops into Eight Ball Records in New York, where they have a stack of music ready for a new audition in a most unusual way. It's got a feeling to it. And this one too. Not only do dancers love Junior, stars like Janet Jackson and Grace Jones have come to watch him in the booth. He snapped Polaroids of Madonna, who picked her Truth or Dare dancers at Sound Factory. She'll come early at 1 o'clock when the door's open. And she'll sit in front of the speaker right in front. She'll come up, say hello, grab a, grab a water and go down, sit in front of the speaker with a couple of her friends, and dance for like two hours. 
but she sometimes asks me for certain records to play, or she'll go like this. I'm playing certain records, she'll go, meh. Junior's work at Sound Factory has gained him worldwide press. While we were at his New York loft, his manager, Jane Britton, was taking pictures for a possible Levi's ad featuring him, and she says he gets countless requests to play at clubs. I get calls from Japan, uh, Canada, uh, Brazil, Berlin, um, Russia, uh, Italy. For the record, he turns them all down. He only spins at Sound Factory on Saturday nights, passing up astronomical offers. How much? It's, uh, to a lot of people, it's a year's salary for one night's work. How does that feel? I like the bottom. Yeah, I like mixing hip-hop and reggae. It's really in touch with the pulse. You know, it's with the people, you know. It's not like a guy who's making music that doesn't spin anymore, you know. Because when you spin, you really get a sense of what'll work, what, what doesn't work, what people feel. Junior's success as a club DJ has led singers like Cindy Lauper to call. He recently co-produced tracks on her latest album, and she came to his home studio recently to hear some new music. <laughs> What is it about Junior that you like? He has a great spirit, and um, he makes music that's, you know, slightly left of center. I never took a music class in my life. I don't know how to play keyboards or anything. I use people to help me. I'm more like a Steven Spielberg type of, you know, behind the camera and get people to do things.